Otosu, or fall, is a term used in judo which means to make one's opponent unconscious. Should one lose consciousness through an opponent's momentary violent pressure to the neck, choking him, he will die if left alone. The student of judo strives to improve both his mind and body, constantly aware that his very life is in the balance. Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be talking about the concept of otosu or to fall. Now, as you just heard, uh, it is like a reminder of not only your life is at stake, but also how dangerous the stuff that we learn are. Uh, the word fall, it's very similar to how we say in the West, he fell in battle. So this is a reminder to everyone that these techniques are not a joke. And you've seen the takedowns that I show on the streets. Just something that we, we do all the time and then it puts someone to sleep and they just go limp. Now, the same can be said for the submissions, but they're in a far more controlled uh, way or done in a more controlled fashion. And thankfully, we have that option. Now, there is something that can go wrong on both ends. First, if you are the person being put in a submission, the old expression of tap early and tap often is never wrong. Trust me. Uh, it's the responsible thing to do. Also, if you are someone applying a submission and especially if you're a higher rank, that person is your responsibility. And it's very important to know that. Let me tell you a little story and very lucky I made it out, um, you know, safe at least. So years ago, years ago. When I was a white belt, um, I was on this open mat in jujitsu and I was up against this purple belt. I remember being in side control and all of a sudden he spins very quickly and very violently, I, I would say. And I was put in a strangle. Now looking back, I know it was a paper cutter. And I remember taking just one breath and that breath sounded very off. I lifted my leg to tap because my hands were tied. And everything goes black. Next thing I know, I was being woken up. And not only that, but my neck was actually bleeding from the collar. And that mark stayed on my neck for weeks. So kind of like slicing a knife on the neck. So if it wasn't for my friend who was on the side of the mat and saw me go limp, he would have kept going, actually. So... I don't know who does that to a white belt, especially as a purple belt. So you've been doing this for at least four to five years. So it's it's truly amazing now looking back at it. And not only did I escape, thankfully, but that person, how irresponsible they were. Now, again, you say, uh, a lot of people blame you. You should have tapped. But again, I took one breath and I was a white belt. I did not know what's going on. And boom, I was out. And... um so, I was on the ride home and he said to me that I saw him continue <laughs> as you were limp and I had to like push him off and tell him, hey, he went to sleep. So, you know, I was very lucky to not have suffered anything, but, you know, it's not the case for a lot of people. And that's what, that's what you should know. That So, if you are on the side that's doing the submission, do it progressively, especially in training, because there's really no need. Even me now, as a black belt in judo, when I go against other black belts and I free up the arm, and all I have to do is just lean back, I still do it progressively. Same with the strangle, a clock choke, after they failed at throwing me or whatever. I still do that progressively, especially with the lower ranks, white belts, yellow belts, orange belts, etc., there's also the other thing that uh, people do where they just rip the arm or rip the leg uh, as if they're making a statement, you know, I I'm the best or whatever. First of all, no, there there's really no need. A good submission starts way before the lock is even put in, where you where your knee is trapped in a heel hook or your elbow is and sh your elbow and shoulder is completely locked or trapped before the arm bar happens. 
that's a good submission it's not the breaking mechanism itself so like that kid uh, in ebi uh, who just ripped that heel hook so it's it's absolutely horrendous but also before i get to that sometimes we get stuck in a submission for seconds and seconds on end as you see here uh, koji komuro uh, back when he was in high school it is still going on and it was still it looks very tight and he should have tapped way earlier but he went to sleep with this so again tap early and tap often will always will never go out of style but also there are the people that do not leave you the choice to do that like i said that kid in ebi grabbed that heel and just absolutely ripped it and he thinks he's gonna be the next gordon ryan or whoever but first of all he has to understand that nobody will fight him doing that he will never have a super fight uh, if people uh, see him doing that and not only that he ripped the heel i'm not gonna show it because it's absolutely horrendous but he ripped the heel and stood up and started giving the the, the crowd a standing ovation as if uh, he's some you know courteous gentleman it's absolutely horrendous to look at um also uh, someone when they're gonna fight him and they're far more skilled than him they're gonna injure him severely and end his career out of precaution because they're gonna be like i better do that to him before he does that to me so doing these things is absolutely unnecessary and it's it says more about you than you know your fighting skills nobody cares about your fighting skills all that matters is your responsibility sure results are very important but it's also how you put that submission and how you left them no choice before even blocking that submission one great example uh, galvao versus ryan he absolutely tied him up before that rear naked choke and galvao tapped early and in a responsible manner so learn from those people not the reckless kids and the purple belt at your gym so it's very important that you you being put in a submission just taps I, I a lot of people it happens with me that i free up the arm and it's still bent they tap or when the lapel is right across their neck and i start to rotate you know clock choke immediately they tap or whatever and also you know apply it progressively there, there's really no need to sink it in you know violently especially if you're a purple belt doing that on a white belt it there's really no need you you never know what might happen to that person so please be responsible as someone receiving the submission and as someone applying the submission that's the message of this video and there's truly no need for all of this Th these are very dangerous things and you know you have to live with this if permanent damage happens or you know you unfortunately uh, cause someone irreversible damage or god forbid killed someone so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening